is to be the church of the future. The 21st century mystery temple. A place where the church is a tool for human development, human growth and evolution, the recovery of black people's humanity and dignity, and a power center for black self-determination. We're doing it in every city that we're in, and we're going to do it in every city we're going to go to in order to facilitate the consciousness raising of black people. Our goal, simply said, is to restore our people to our original place of power and dignity in the world. Amen. morning to our church family, to our friends and virtual visitors. Welcome to the Shrine of the Black Madonna of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. What a joy and privilege to be able to come together this morning to praise God and to celebrate who we are and whose we are. We are a covenant people bound together in a sacred mission to liberate our people and bring the world into submission to the will of God. Here at the Shrine of the Black Madonna, we practice a best self theology dedicated to creating a new positive culture that changes our negative beliefs and opens us to the infinite possibilities God makes available to us. We also offer a racially affirming ministry that focuses on the upliftment and empowerment of people of African descent. We are proud to say that we are an African people. In traditional African communities and societies, homage is paid on occasion to the ancestors. We carry on that same tradition in this church. So during the month of August, we celebrate and honor the legacy of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. Marcus Garvey was truly a man of God who taught us and encouraged us to unite as a people and to build for ourselves. He reminded us that we are an African people and we should take pride in who we are and where we came from, our motherland, Africa. He challenged us to reclaim Africa 
and our history. Garvey declared that a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. Marcus Garvey inspired thousands of black people the world over to fight for our liberation, including our founder, Jeremoji Abebe Ajiman. Here at the Shrine of the Black Madonna, we continue his mission by unifying and building for our people. Remember to speak the name of Marcus Garvey so that we might keep him alive in our hearts, minds, and in our work. Open your hearts and minds this morning to the power of the Holy Spirit and reconnect and recommit to God, for there is still work to be done. We now come to our prayer of invocation. Let us pray. O holy and powerful God, we enter into this service with nothing but praise for you. We ask that you enter into the places and spaces where our people abide this morning. Help us to be open to your spirit so that our minds can receive enlightenment. Pour your wisdom into us, dear Lord. Help us to use your insight and intellect to guide our people through these troubling times. During this time of recommitment, help us to rededicate our lives to you, our ancestors, and our people. Remind us of the dedication and sacrifices of Marcus Garvey and all of our ancestors who committed their lives to the liberation of black people. Lord, this is the day that you have made. This is the time that you have placed us in. So on this day and in this time, you are determined and dedicated to do what you have called us to do. We now ask that you bless this service and all who have been called to participate and be a part of it. Bless our minister, Reverend Wamuira, who is delivering out your word today. Open our hearts and minds to receive the message and to use the message to do your will and to do your work. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of Jesus, our revolutionary example. Amen and Ashe. The Black Christian Nationalist Creed. I believe that human society stands under the judgment of one God, revealed to all and known by many names. God's creative power is visible in the mysteries of the universe, in the revolutionary Holy Spirit, which will not long permit men to endure injustice, nor to wear the shackles of bondage, in the rage of the powerless when they struggle to be free, and in the violence and conflict which even now threaten to level the hills and the mountains. I believe that Jesus, the Black Messiah, was a revolutionary leader sent by God to rebuild the African nation Israel and to liberate African people from powerlessness and from the oppression, brutality, and exploitation of the white Gentile world. I believe that the revolutionary spirit of God embodied in the Black Messiah is born anew in each generation and that Black Christian nationalists constitute the living remnant of God's chosen people in this day and are charged by him with responsibility for the liberation of African people. I believe that both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism, and so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of African people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and program of the Black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church.
like this part right here. Come on. something to it just to encourage you we're gonna take you to church later let's go we'll keep marching right until the victory is won to all my brothers out there hold your head up brother till the victory is won to all my sisters in the struggle keep believing sister till the victory is won till that day till that day Just me and you I feel so lost Cause I don't know what to do Now what if I choose The wrong thing to do I'm so afraid Afraid of disappointing you so I need to talk to you and ask you for your guidance, especially today when my mind gets so cloudy. Guide me until I'm sure I open up my
Brothers and sisters, we now come to our pastoral prayer. Let us pray. O oh, holy and powerful God, we gather together this morning in different spaces and places, but we are still one people, your people. O oh, God, we thank you and call on your name. We glory in you, our God, our strength. You have told us to seek your presence continually, and we do that now. You have told us to remember the wondrous works you have done, and we do that now. You are our God, and there is none like you. You never promise what you will not keep. Lord, this morning we claim healing of anything that stands between you and our total well-being. We claim healing power, healing presence, healing light, and healing love on our people who may feel hopeless and have lost faith in you. We claim healing on our world, that you will give us all the insight and wisdom to protect ourselves during this pandemic. We pray that this virus that plagues our world will soon weaken and disappear. We ask for protection for our children and educators in the places and spaces that they are assigned to teach and learn. We claim healing on our communities in this country, our motherland Africa, in South Africa, in Ethiopia, and in Haiti. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division and discord. We claim healing for our brothers and sisters in this church community who are sick and shut in, whether it be physical, mental, or spiritual. Lord, touch them with your power. Remove anything that is a stumbling block to them being made whole and well. Lord, console those who have lost loved ones. Bring them comfort as their departed transition to the ancestral realm. Remind them that there is a bomb in Gilead that will give them peace and comfort. Lord, we just want to give you thanks for your good gifts to us. We thank you for this church community and those who have committed their lives to its success. Thank you for allowing so many of us to be blessed by the ministries of this congregation and to be a blessing to others. Now, God, we ask that you just prepare our hearts and minds to receive your word and the Holy Spirit. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of Jesus, our revolutionary example. Amen and I say.
Hello and good morning, brothers and sisters. I bid you greetings. I am delighted to share a word with you on this day. You know, it is the month of August, and at the Shrines of the Black Madonna, we use August to celebrate the life and legacy of Marcus Mosiah Garvey. And for those of you who don't know, Marcus Garvey was a race man who loved his people and held a vision for uniting Africans across the diaspora to love and create and care for ourselves. He founded the Universal Negro Improvement Association and was the founding force for the Black Star Line and the Black Star Nurses and just really for the philosophy and opinions that embrace loving our own black selves. And even he used what he had to talk to people and share his ideas with people. You see, Africa for the Africans was not just a slogan or a tagline for him, but it was the idea that consumed his existence. In other words, he allowed himself to be used up by this vision, Africa for the Africans. He lived his life, Africa for the Africans. Yet this is not a history lesson on Marcus Garvey. There's plenty of information available if you want to read up about him. And you know, as I was preparing, I even was taken aback by the fact that Garvey was born on August 17th, 1887. That's almost 134 years ago. And here it is today, over 80 years after this man has left the earth, we are still saying his name. And I wonder why that is. How is it that some people who walk this earth, they come and we don't remember them, yet others, their names we are still saying even 80 years beyond their death? And it dawned on me that the spirit, the essence of Africa for the Africans is still alive today. Our desire to be together, to have a nation of our own, to have industries of our own, to have things that we own and control is still alive today. Yet even beyond that, What keeps us talking about Marcus Garvey is that Marcus Garvey left it all on the table. And that really inspires us. He truly used his life for his purpose. And that inspiration gives us breath, literally. We are animated and charged to do these things in our own time, in our own lives today. And so I just want to spend a few moments talking about the urgency of now. And when I talk about urgency, I want you to listen, to tune your ear into urgency as something important that requires swift action. That means something that has our attention and requires an immediate response. Our text today comes from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. And it reads, Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. 
May God add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. Now, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about the context of this scripture. And I also want to say that this is not going to be a me imploring you to give more money to the church. That's always welcome. This is not a money sermon. But really, Jesus is gathered before the crowds. And at the beginning of this chapter in Luke, he is sharing really some powerful words, not just information, because, you know, we like to get together and gather around and listen to things and say, oh, that was some good information. This is not a gathering about information. Jesus is relating to the people and telling them, really, I'm giving you some wisdom that's going to help you to navigate these uncertain times, so so listen up. And he starts off by talking about the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. He says, the hypocrisy of the Pharisees is pervasive. It's pervasive like yeast. In other words, it starts off as something small that you can sort of ignore or brush off. You know how sometimes when things are like, hmm, might be a red flag, but no, I'm just going to ignore it. It says it starts off that way, but it balloons. You know, kind of like how yeast, when dough rises, it balloons, and it touches everything, and not always in a good way. So it says, beware of the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. And then he goes on to say, don't be scared of those who can only kill your body. That's some powerful stuff. He really gets people to understand that even the threat of death, you don't have to be scared because your concern is centered around a God who undergirds your very existence. And so even as you have concerns about what's out there in the world that can harm you, balance that with the existence of a God who is for you. And then he goes on to say, that if you acknowledge me in all things, I will acknowledge you. In other words, we have to have a relatedness as a community. There has to be some reciprocity amongst us as a community. And finally, he tells the people, there will come a time. It may not be now, but there will come a time when you will have to confess before the religious and political authorities about what you really believe. They're going to call into question Why are you following this Jesus person? And he says to him, don't worry about what to say when that moment comes, because the Holy Spirit will guide you. In other words, you don't have to have yourself torn up in knots about how am I going to explain this? What am I going to say about this? The Holy Spirit will guide you in that moment. And so these are really powerful lessons that Jesus is imparting to the crowd. And in the midst of all this, in our scripture lesson, someone says, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And it's like, were we even having a conversation about inheritance? Have you been listening to anything that I've been saying all day? You know, sometimes we are in the midst of being given the keys to the kingdom, those things that we have prayed about and talked about, those things that ail us, we are given the remedy and we cannot hear it because our minds are locked into something. And for this person, it was locked into this inheritance and what was happening with his brother. You know, there's something about possessions and things. You know, what are we going to get? What will we do with them? How will we store them? How will we keep them? They begin to occupy a lot of our time, a lot of our energy, almost to the point where they become our idols, like we arrange our lives around our stuff. It's like having these things or brings us some kind of value or some meaning to our lives. I mean, people treat their stuff at times like it's their own family member. But Jesus is calling the people to remember that even as we take care of our earthly things, which we must take care of, and even as we think about the stuff that we are left, the possessions that we have, our inheritance, which for most people sometimes is just mama's pearl necklace or the family house or the car, the stuff, that what we do on that side of the, of the equation we must also take care of on the spiritual side of the equation. 
So we're not only caught up in the temporal existence, but also our spiritual existence. It is an opportunity, really, for us to create community around one another. Yet, the only thing that tends to use us up nowadays is stress and anxiety and worry or our upsets about what people should be doing or how the people in our life ought to be going, like how the world should be or how our leaders should be. And all that does really is keep us trapped. It keeps us on this hamster wheel, and there is like no getting off. And it is a world of fantasy because really those things that we have concern and worry about haven't happened yet. They don't even exist in reality. Yet there is something that Jesus says that really sticks out to me. You know, he says, then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? You know, as we go around storing not only possessions, but sometimes we withhold our love, we withhold possessions, we withhold our talents, like those things that we try to shore up and hoard for ourselves, when the reality is that we don't know when our last time is going to be on this earth. But even yet and still, It's not about what possessions we leave for those left behind. It's like, what are we creating? What are our legacies that we are leaving behind for people? How are we teaching those who are coming up behind us, and really those of us who are peers with us, about how to navigate the world, how to navigate life? You know, Marcus Garvey's Proclamation Africa for the African creates a whole world where people can show up and recognize themselves in it. Africa for the Africans. I can get attached to that. And we have all benefited from this vision that Marcus Garvey shared with us. And the key is that he did indeed share this vision. You see, brothers and sisters, sometimes the inheritance that we have to share with others. It's not a car, it's not a house, but sometimes it's an idea that keeps people going. It's a vision in which they can live into, fulfilled, and seeing their life differently. And so really the urgency of right now is asking us, who are we? Or better yet, who do we have to be right now in order to address our current situation? What do we have to let go of right now to leave a legacy where people can have the keys to the kingdom of God? Brothers and sisters, we are creating a new community here on earth. We are no longer waiting for someone to come save us. We are no longer waiting for people to give us permission to be together and to believe in our own Africanness and our own African selves. And so even as we go forth in life, not knowing the time or the timing of our demise, I ask you, brothers and sisters, to live each and every day and share a vision of a new life in a new world with everyone you come into contact with. Amen and Ashe. Brothers and sisters, if you were moved by the Holy Spirit during our virtual village experience today, then I invite you to learn more about our Best Self movement. There are three ways to connect with us. First, go to our webpage at www.shrinesoftheblackmadonna.org. Once you're there, scroll down the page until you see a tab on the right that reads, join our email list. Enter your email address and click subscribe. One of our ministers will then reach out to you in a timely manner. Now, if you are interested in joining this very powerful move of the creator, in that case, there is a tab on the left 
that reads join the shrine click on that tab enter your name your phone number a physical address and your email address one of our pastors will then reach out to you to talk to you about becoming a member of our best self movement just below that tab is a link that will take you to a message from our presiding bishop Jeremoji Menelik Kimathi which shares more information about what we believe, our faith, and our mission as a church. Finally, you can reach us through our virtual office by calling 833-833-0755. We look forward to reaching out to you so that together we can build a Pan-African world community with power. Be blessed. Brothers and sisters, we come now to the time where we act upon our practice of self-determination, which sustains the many institutions of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. The Shrines of Detroit, Atlanta, Houston, our cultural centers, the Beulah Land Farms Incorporated, PAOCC Liberia, all were built upon the sacrificial giving that makes cooperative economics more than just an ideal, but a dream realized. Your financial support helps to keep our ministries in every region of the country relevant, transforming, and productive. As you donate today, make your tax-deductible donation by credit, debit, PayPal, direct deposit, or by check to the P.O. Box of your local region. Thank you for your sacrificial giving, which reflects the self-giving of our standard bearer, Jesus the Black Messiah. May God bless you for your tithing gift today, and we thank you for your continued support. Let's continue with coffee, community, and conversation at our virtual coffee hour right after today's service. We'd love to meet, greet, and get to know you. Join us via Zoom, meeting ID 856-196-31208. Phone ID 346-248-7799. Get to know your Pan-African world community virtually at our virtual coffee hour coming up next via Zoom. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us this morning as we worship together at the Shrine of the Black Madonna. I hope that you have been inspired by this service and by the words and message given by Reverend Wamuira. As we go forward, let us continue to use the power of the Holy Spirit to order and guide our steps. May the Lord keep you until we meet again. We come now to the prayer of benediction. Let us pray. Oh, holy and powerful God, we thank you for hearing our prayers and feeding us with your word and encouraging us through this service. Take us and use us to love and serve you and our people. Give us the wisdom and the power to continue to do your will. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of Jesus, our revolutionary example. Amen and Ashe. Amen.